All right, this is the second part of the series bandpass filter example that we started in the previous video. And we're going to start this video with finding the magnitude of V out at either one of the half power frequencies or cutoff frequencies, omega 1, omega 2. Because remember that at either of these uh, two frequencies, we only achieve this equality that the equivalent. Uh, reactance which is XL minus XC is equal to the resistance in the circuit so here since we have more than one resistor this is REQ okay which would be just the sum of the hundred and uh, ten ohm resistors so at either one of these two frequencies that's the only time when the storage elements together okay since this is equivalent reactance so it's the storage elements together uh, equals the REQ. So our REQ is 110. That means our reactance will be 110. And the impedance would either be plus J110 or minus J110, depending on which frequency we were at. Um, when we're at omega 1, which is less than the resonant frequency, well, that's when the reactance of the capacitor is going to be greater than the reactance of the inductor. Okay, so in that case, uh, you would get minus J110 ohms here, and then add omega 2, which is greater than the resonant frequency, well, that's when you have the opposite case where XL is greater than XC, and that's when you'd have a plus J110. But when we're finding magnitude, you'll see the sign doesn't matter, but, um, you know, this is actually what's occurring as far as the sign of that impedance goes. So to get... Uh, v out using this uh, circuits approach we just can use voltage divider where we'd have 10 at an angle of 0 degrees and then our ratio uh, of impedances we'd have 100 in the numerator and then in the denominator we'd have 110 and then plus or minus plus or minus J110, depending again on which half power frequency our omega is equal to. But you see, since we uh, want the magnitude, uh, well, first of all, let's, uh, let's go ahead and write what we would have here in um, polar form for these impedances. So up top we'd have 100 at an angle of 0 in polar form and then here um, our magnitude would be 155.6 and then our angle would either be plus or minus 45 degrees again depending on which half power frequency we're at but since we're interested in magnitude okay the magnitude of V0 well, that's why I don't really care about this sign here. In fact, I don't care about the angle. So the magnitude is just going to be a 1,000, right? Because 10 times 100 divided by 155.6. And that comes out to, that comes out to 6.43 volts. Okay, so you see that's our magnitude. And to check this answer, we can just take our max, okay? Because remember that um, at either half power frequency, we talked about this when we looked at the frequency response equation a few videos ago, but at either one of these half power frequencies, the magnitude of V out over VI is equal to our max divided by root 2. You know, in the previous problem, when we had a ideal inductor, this is a couple of videos ago when we first talked about this, and our circuit had an ideal inductor, well, this max was 1, that V out equaled v, v in at the max. Here, in this problem, since we have a non-ideal inductor, our max is 0 0.909. In this problem here, this was 0 0.909. And if you take 0 0.909 and divide that by square root of 2, it's 0 0.643. And then since our Vn 
is uh, 10 volts, well, we get the same answer. So you see this 6.43 volts is the same as 9.09 .09 volts, which is our maximum peak volts, um, you know, our maximum voltage at resonance divided by root 2. So you can do that as a check. All right, continuing on here. Um, it's also useful to know what the half power frequencies actually equal and we can use these equations here that we derived earlier now again um, since we have multiple resistors this R is REQ so it's going to be 110 ohms just like it was um, in the previous analysis that we did so if we just take our values and plug in 110 here um, 0.1 henrys for L and half a uh, microfarad for uh, C and we plug and chug here you'll see that this is minus uh, 550 okay plus or minus and the radical here comes out to 4506 okay and these in radians per second now remember I talked about this when we first talked about these equations that you're gonna get two answers since this is uh, a result of a quadratic equation so we get two roots uh, one is negative and you ignore the negative one so the answer would be minus 550 plus this 4506 which gives us 3956 radians per second for our omega 1 and then omega 2 um, you're gonna have still 550 right but now it's plus there's no minus sign in front for this root and then plus or minus again it's the same radical that's what this two dashes mean the same as what we have up there so it's going to be 550 plus 4506 because the 550 minus the 4506 gives us a negative frequency which again we ignore because there's no physical meaning to negative frequency so this gives us a upper cutoff of 50 56 radians per second so now um, remember that our Q of our circuit of our series bandpass filter this was in the previous video it was about 4 I think it was 4.07 if I remember right but the key thing is that this is below 10 and when your Q of your circuits below 10 that's when you can't assume uh, symmetry. So let's put some numbers to our frequencies here and see that um, we have an asymmetric type bell-shaped curve. And this isn't drawn to scale by any means. Um, our resonant frequency was 4472, right? And here's our bandwidth between omega 2 and omega 1. Well, omega 2, that's the 50, 56. And omega 1, that's the 39, 56. So in between our resonant frequency and our upper cutoff, we have a difference of 584 radians per second. And the difference between 4472 and 3956 is 516. So you can see quite a bit of asymmetry here because if our curve was symmetric, you know, these two numbers would be identical. And when your Q is 10 or greater, while they're not identical, they're, they're really close. And they get closer and closer as Q gets bigger and bigger. And um, as Q goes to infinity, you approach perfect symmetry. All right, the last thing I wanted to mention here is, you know, we looked at using the circuits approach for finding V out for various particular omegas like resonant frequency, half power frequency, and then the two extremes when omega is equal to zero and omega is equal to infinity. If you want to find the magnitude of V out at any other omega, this is the circuit that you would use where you just plug in your omega L and your 1 over omega C and see what this impedance is and then use that in your voltage divider equation to get V out. So as an example, if we had a source frequency of 4,750 radians per second, omega L with the L being 0.1 henrys would be 475 ohms right that's our XL right this is XC 
the reactance of the capacitor, 1 over omega c at this source frequency would be 447 ohms. So now when I do my voltage divider equation to find V out, it's just going to be our source voltage times a ratio where 100's in the top. And then we got 110. And this would be plus J28, right? Because we got uh, J475 is the impedance of the inductor and minus J447 is the impedance of the capacitor. So together that would give us a plus J28. So if we just look at the magnitude, that's just going to be 10 times 100. And then if you do some of the squares square rooted for 110 and 28, this bottom magnitude is just 113.5. So 1,000 divided by 113.5, which gives you 8.81 volts. Okay, so um, that finishes up this problem, and that finishes series bandpass filters. Uh, the next video, uh, we'll look at a parallel bandpass filter.